Over the last week, tens of millions of women have posted the hashtag MeToo, sharing their personal stories of sexual harassment and assault. This of course is in response to the very public disgrace and firing of film producer and CEO Harvey Weinstein, following a New York Times article that broke the story. Over 40 women have now come forward with accusations of sexual assault, spanning a period of decades. Some of the top female stars in Hollywood, like Angelina Jolie and Gwyneth Paltrow. Now, everyone's life tells a story. Some inspire with lessons of overcoming great obstacles, while others act as modern day cautionary tales. Today, we discuss the top four lessons to learn from Harvey Weinstein. Welcome to your Six Figure Mentor. Our goal is to help you become the person you were always meant to be. We do that by offering free business mentoring. For entrepreneurs, we teach you how to start, launch, or grow a business. For first-time investors, we teach you how to spot a good investment, support them to profitability, and how to structure the deal. So let's get right into it. The top four lessons we learned from Harvey Weinstein. Lesson number one, never shit where you eat. In the animal kingdom, this never occurs. When you see a lion or lioness take down an antelope and feed her cubs, the cubs simply know where they can poop. They know they can poop here, they can poop here, they can even poop here. They just can't poop here. Now, why is that? Because when you're in the wild, all of nature is your bathroom. <laughs> you can poop anywhere else. Just don't poop where your food is. No one wants to smell that when they eat. Now, although that's true about the animal kingdom, humans seem to do this when it comes to their businesses. In my experience as a business mentor and angel investor, people seem to go wrong in two main areas, in money and in sex. So before going into business with someone, it would help you to know how they handle both money and sex. But inner office personal relationships happen. We can agree that when you find you're attracted to someone who is a potential business partner or employee, it can be sticky. And there's a host of HR rules that are there to help the situation. But my personal rule of thumb that I live by to maintain a proper mentee-mentor relationship is to put business first. If you can't put business first, then simply don't do business with them. If you're gonna screw it up now, you might as well screw it up outside of your business. So if you have to be in a relationship with someone, then establish the relationship before any business occurs, or even there's any talk of business. If he or she rejects your advances, at least it doesn't affect your business. Now, Harvey clearly did not do this. So out of court settlements date back to the 1990s, which cost his company hundreds of thousands of dollars over the decades. Now think about it. Aren't there places in the world where Harvey could have gone with this money to pursue urges on a more or less legal form that wouldn't destroy his business? Of course. So why did he have to do it so close to home? Why did he have to poop on his own business? I believe that for some people, they just have this self-destructive thing about them, this thing they gotta prove. For it to have gone on this long unchecked means that there was an added thrill somewhere, somehow, to flexing his power which harassing people outside of the industry simply would not have satisfied. Lesson number two, a legacy can be gone in five minutes. Warren Buffett has this famous quote. He says, it takes 20 years to build a reputation. It takes five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. This lesson applies not just to Harvey Weinstein, but to those who have associated with him. Donna Karen is arguably one of the most influential business leaders, let alone women, in fashion today. Recently under fire for apparently putting the blame on the victims in this situation. It's not Harvey Weinstein. You look at everything all over the world today, you know, and how women are dressing and, you know, what they're asking by just presenting themselves the way they do. What are they asking for? Trouble. Now, in the week following the incident, Donna Karen related companies took a 9% plunge in the market. 
Even though Donna sold her controlling interest some years ago, the direct correlation is unmistakable. Rose McGowan mobilized 50,000 signatures in a matter of days to major department stores to ask them to stop carrying Donna Karen companies in their retail locations. In Donna Karen's defense, which she has pointed out herself, her track record supporting women and children and charities and philanthropy spanned decades and speak for themselves. Unfortunately, not as loud as her recent misstep. Her companies, in fact, may never recover, a legacy gone in less than five minutes. Lesson number three, money and power don't corrupt, they amplify. You know, it's often said that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. It's also said that money changes everything. Now the truth is, is that money and power don't have any power in and of themselves. They actually only amplify. So for instance, if you take someone who is a saint prior to money and power, after they receive money and power, they become a Princess Diana or a Bono. If you take someone who is an asshole before money and power, after they gain money and power, they become a Dan Bilzerian or a Jake Paul. Take someone who is a pervert before money and power, they become a Charlie Sheen or a Harvey Weinstein. So for this reason, it's important to know who you're in business with before you go too far. So how do I do this? I often invite potential business partners to a range of social settings where I can observe who they really are. I don't let them know that I'm a feminist at first, and since I have a lot of friends and associates that are beautiful models or former models, I get to see how they re react to the opposite sex when no one else is around. So when it's us, just us boys talking, how do they talk about women when they're no longer around? Character is everything. So who you are in private really is who you are in real life. So choose to do business with people who have ethics and are above reproach. And lastly, lesson number four, it's never too late to change if you take ownership. Now Weinstein, while denying rape, had this to say. He said that it was a different time and an era. He said, I came of age in the 60s and 70s when all the rules about behavior and workplace were different. Now this is what's called a post facto argument, meaning you can't blame me for stuff that wasn't illegal at the time. Now. While that's all fine and dandy, <laughs> I'm pretty sure sexual assault and rape were illegal back in the 70s and the early 60s where this Kill the Mockingbird scene took place. I got something to say. And then I ain't gonna say no more. He took advantage of me. And if you find fancy gentlemen ain't gonna do nothing about it, then you're just a bunch of lousy, yellow, stinking cowards. The, the whole bunch of you and your fancy ass don't come to nothing. Your mammon and your Miss May Ellen, it don't come to nothing, Mr. Finch. <laughs> Harvey isn't apologizing here, he's blame shifting. He's basically saying, it's not my fault. Donna Karen had a somewhat similar response. She said, I made a statement that unfortunately was not representative of how I feel or what I believe. My statements were taken out of context. This is also blame shifting because she's saying it's actually the reporter's fault for quoting her out of context Except it wasn't an article. It was a filmed interview where there were no cuts or edits. And it most definitely was not out of context. So how should both Harvey Weinstein and Donna Karen have responded? There are six simple words that would have sufficed. It's my fault and I'm sorry. Now two excellent examples of people who take ownership for past faults are Ben Affleck and Quentin Tarantino. 
Following the Weinstein allegations, Ben Affleck took the, to Twitter and he said, I am saddened and angry that a man who I worked with used his position of power to intimidate, sexually harass, and manipulate many women over decades. The additional allegations of assault that I read this morning made me sick. This is completely unacceptable and I find myself asking what can I do to make sure this doesn't happen to others. We need to do better at protecting our sisters, friends, co-workers, and daughters. We must support those who come forward, condemn this type of behavior when we see it, and help ensure there are more women in positions of power. The response to his tweet was immediate. He was attacked for a 2003 incident on TRL, where Ben Affleck groped the boob of a female MTV host. His response was simply, I acted inappropriately towards Miss Burton, and I sincerely apologize. Quentin Tarantino also came out apologizing for a sin of omission. He said, I knew enough to do more than I did. Now, in both of these statements, neither blames the age or the times that they live in. They don't blame camera editings or writers, and they don't blame shift to this being taken out of context. What happened? What was the change in Ben Affleck? Well, I think there's a simple explanation. Ben Affleck stopped being a stupid single guy. <laughs> he was a very stupid guy in his 20s and a little bit into his 30s. He got married, he had kids, he became a dad, and he grew up. There's something about having a daughter that changes you or should change you as a man. So those are the top four lessons we can learn from Harvey Weinstein. Now in summary, I would have this to add, that your past doesn't determine your future, your present does. If we look to the lives of Abe Lincoln and JFK, both were recorded in public and private making racist comments, but you never hear about that today. Both these men have a legacy of standing against slavery and championing civil rights. But both men were products of the times they lived in. They lived in very racially charged time periods where racism was the norm. Yet they grew so that their actions spoke louder than their past missteps or words. So what needs to happen today? Number one, I think there needs to be some restitution. Number one, Weinstein needs to go to jail, plain and simple. Number two, I'd like to see the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences somehow strip Miramax and Weinstein Studios of their 284 Oscar nominations and their 68 Oscar wins. And I'm not suggesting they take away the actual uh, awards from directors and actors of the movies, just the credit that the studio received, even if it's only on a website or on IMDb. Third, the majority culture, which in this case is men, needs to stand with women in refusing to work with any company that uses power and influence to break the law. Two great examples have come up. The first is Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum pulled the plug on a project that he had currently going on with the Weinstein Company. He just refused to finish a project and he's gonna suffer a financial loss. Kevin Smith gets my award though for doing his utmost. In a remarkably unselfish act, he announced that all future residuals, which is basically his whole career, will be donated to a nonprofit group called Women in Film. That, to me, just blew my mind. And it gives me hope. I think that we can do this, not just in Hollywood, but in a place that it really counts in America, which is commerce and business. I want to believe that as a community of startup entrepreneurs and angel investors that we can create a world where our daughters and future daughters will never be subject to sexual harassment in the workplace. I believe that we can bring about a world where a boys club mentality of rich and powerful men one day seem as antiquated as having segregated schools because people would just much rather spend their money on businesses that put social good above pure profit. So that's my two cents. Do you agree with me? Leave a comment below. And what else do you think can or should be done? Thank you guys for watching. This is not my normal video but for free business mentoring and tips on how to invest in startups that are profitable while making the world a better place, subscribe below.
I love you guys. I'll see you guys later this week. Take care.